Not only celebrities acknowledge the law of attraction, this phenomenon has crossed over into the religious realm. This universal principle, often associated with the glitz and glamour of the Hollywood elite, is far more prevalent than you might think. It seeps into the very fabric of our lives, influencing our thoughts, our actions and our destiny. The law of attraction is based on the notion that like attracts like. It suggests that our thoughts, both conscious and subconscious, can influence our reality. If we focus on positive thoughts, we attract positive experiences and vice versa. It's a compelling concept, one that has found acceptance far beyond the silver screen. But it's not just the rich and famous who subscribe to this belief. Many members of the clergy, those devoted to spiritual and religious service, have also embraced the law of attraction. They see it as a divine principle, a celestial phenomenon that transcends our earthly existence. This spiritual philosophy isn't limited to the glitterati, but has found resonance even among the sacred halls of religious institutions. Members of the clergy, those serving in religious leadership, have also found value in the law of attraction. The law of attraction, the belief that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative experiences into a person's life, is not just a concept embraced by celebrities and self-help gurus. It has found its way into the realm of religious teachings, resonating with various members of the clergy. These spiritual leaders, in their unique ways, have integrated the principles of the law of attraction into their teachings and sermons, demonstrating its wide-ranging influence. Take, for instance, the charismatic Reverend Ike, a well-known American minister and evangelist. He was a strong proponent of the law of attraction, and his teachings revolved around the idea that you can attract into your life whatever you focus on. He famously said, you can't lose with the stuff I use, referring to the power of positive thinking and the law of attraction. Reverend Ike's sermons were filled with affirmations, visualizations, and positive thoughts. He taught his followers that their minds were powerful tools that could shape their realities. According to him, if you believed in something with conviction and visualized it with clarity, you could bring it into existence. This belief is a clear embodiment of the law of attraction. Reverend Ike was not alone in his teachings. Numerous other members of the clergy have echoed similar sentiments, incorporating the law of attraction into their spiritual guidance. They've used it as a tool to empower their followers, encouraging them to focus on positivity, believe in their desires, and visualize their goals to manifest them. These spiritual leaders' teachings highlight the universal nature of the law of attraction. It transcends the boundaries of self-help and enters the realm of spirituality, demonstrating its wide-ranging appeal and influence. Indeed, the law of attraction has found a place in the pulpit, influencing sermons and spiritual teachings. The law of attraction, however, doesn't resonate with all members of the clergy. The clergy, much like the rest of us, hold a spectrum of views about the law of attraction. Some embrace it wholeheartedly, seeing it as a divine principle that aligns with their religious teachings. They view it as a spiritual law, a cosmic force that reflects the power of positive thinking and the manifestation of our desires. On the other hand, there are those who reject it outright, arguing that it oversimplifies the complexity of human suffering and the divine will. They question the notion of attracting abundance or hardship based solely on one's thoughts. Yet there are others who find a middle ground, reinterpreting the law of attraction within the framework of their own religious teachings. They may not see it as a universal law, but rather a tool for personal growth and self-improvement. In the end, the law of attraction, like any belief, is subject to interpretation and acceptance varies, even within the clergy. Yet its influence is undeniable, having permeated even the sacred realms of religion.